Okay, we are on. Hello, I hear from Ati. Hello, Yiqing. So our screen is basically on, Shamin. So yep. uh, let's start the session. All so right. For everyone, everyone. So if anyone able to listen to our sharing today, so feel free to tell, uh, uh, say hello to us and we we'll respond to you. Hello, Dr. Gandhi. Yes, Dr. Gandhi is our president of the uh, IMU Alumni Association. So he is on. So whoever come and join us, uh, if you have time, come and join us and uh, uh, listen to us to discuss about uh, uh, weight management. So um, yeah, um, and you feel that this session is going to be very beneficial to anyone that uh, 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 experiencing some weight issue. So feel free to share the link to uh, your friends as well. And um, today, uh, this session is going to last about uh, an hour, so three to uh, two to three o'clock. We will try to uh, keep it with, uh, within the timing because as uh, well, uh, dietitians tend to talk a lot. So yes. Yes, hello, we have uh, Ling Wei Sorry. and uh, Jisim as well. And we have uh, uh, Afeso here. Good. Let's start the session. Now I'll do a share screen so that everyone get to know uh, uh, what is the content we're going to do. And then uh, uh, we will also share with you some of the discussion point as well. Let me do this share screen. Okay. Uh, Shamin, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Good. So everything is set. So today our topic is basically, uh, is uh, this is our first alumni uh, sharing session using uh, Facebook Live. And today's topic is looking into dietitian top tips to straining weight in the time of COVID pandemic. And as mentioned, is that this session is going to last about an hour. And I'm the host uh, today. I'm Kafu. I'm the vice president of the um, IMU Alumni Association. I graduated with a cohort uh, ND108. And today we have a guest here, which is uh, Ms. Shamin. And, Hi. Uh, yes, Shamin has come on board. So today we're going to uh, uh, share this session together. So Poppy, before uh, I bring in Shamin, so Poppy, I give you guys an introduction about uh, uh, Shamin. Shamin is my junior. So Kanye is working as a dietitian company constructor in International Medical University. So basically, his uh, her main role is to conduct and facilitate clinical teaching for final year that they undergraduate during their clinical practicum. And of course, uh, he, uh, before joining to IMU, he, uh, she is also working in hospital uh, Kuala Lumpur for a few years. And certainly, he has, uh, she has actually ex exposed to many disciplines in the hospital. And again, she is my junior. So she is uh, also the alumna of cohort ND110. So, Jamit. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Jamit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to uh, uh to come to this session and uh, Thank hopefully you very much. yes hopefully we will actually share a bit of uh, 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 useful tips for whoever who listen to this uh, session and um, I guess we have this uh, topic is mainly because we hear that uh, weight is an issue during this uh, COVID pandemic and of course there is also statistics saying that. Uh, uh, those who have a weight issue, that means it's higher BMI, um, tend to have uh, more cases in terms of uh, uh, easy to get contracted with COVID mm. infection. Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. the survival rate seems to be poorer compared to others that have a uh, uh, normal uh, BMI. Yeah. Okay. So, and of course, we also can hear from the committee, Alumni Association Committee, and from our uh, friends as well, they mentioned that uh, during this pandemic, it seems that uh, some of them put on some weight. So this is where they ask us, uh, uh, being a dietitian, probably it will be good for us to, to, uh, to discuss this matter. All right. Yep. 
So Shamit, probably to warm up the session, since uh, uh, you are uh, the alumna of IMU, um, can you please tell us uh, uh, what is the most memorable place in IMU during your <laughs> study years? Let's start out with some warm up question. <laughs> um, it doesn't feel like very long ago that I was in IMU, seeing that I'm yes. working there again now. Uh -huh. But uh, I guess uh, during my student years, it was definitely from a different perspective. I guess one mm -hmm. of my favorite places would have been the library. <laughs> I like the peace and quiet. <laughs> um, uh, it was a lot different. Uh, the library layout was a lot different back then than it, than it is now. So correct, I used to correct, correct, correct. Uh, enjoy just um, picking a table and yeah, doing my work in the library. The computers were available then as well. So I would actually spend a lot of my time there <laughs> if I had to pick one place. <laughs> yeah, actually, if you ask me the same question, I would still see a uh, library. I guess uh, among all the places I find library is so quiet per se. Yeah. And then uh, I always like to go to library mainly because there's a lot of books to read mm -hmm. and uh, it's a resource center. So yeah. uh, as long as uh, I go to my session, my session basically is nutrition session. Uh, mm -hmm. All the books, it make me feel like, uh, why don't I own the library? Because it's so resourceful. <laughs> so I can stay there for a few hours, just look through the books. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess library, uh, I agree. I myself also prefer library and I agree yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so good to good to know that. Probably <laughs> we uh, uh, do not drag further. Lah. Let's go mm. uh, to the to a topic today. Sure. Mm. Okay. Now, we start with the first question. All right. right. So whenever I talk about uh, way, uh, it's always an issue. And actually, uh, for your opinion, what does actually excess weight or increased weight mean? Um, well, I would say that the most um, basic definition of uh, increased weight is when you look at things like numbers, right? So one of the categories that we used to uh, look at weight would be the BMI categories. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you say increased weight, uh, te technically speaking, would mean that somebody is in the category of the overweight or more, you know, in terms of the BMI. That would mm -hmm. be increased, right? But I yeah. come from a clinical background, um, mm. and I would say, you know, the excess weight that that someone has, uh, especially when it uh, when it leads to maybe high blood sugar, uh, it could even lead to diabetes, or their weight could have um, increased their blood lipid levels and means cholesterol levels. Uh, mm -hmm. They have mobility issues. They can't sleep at night. You know, there are symptoms of this weight. Uh, mm. excess weight and then i would say that 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 would mean excess you know so it stops them from doing things normally and uh it, it's a bit of a, a change in their life it disrupts their lifestyle so i guess that's yeah. where someone does need to make some changes to be good for them of course and to prevent any any diseases that could come come with this um excess weight yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i guess i like your uh the ways to explain because i think when we say about excess weight or increased weight, uh, we shouldn't just limit to the number on the scale. Yeah, true. So right. the excess weight should actually may cause uh, some uh, uh, physical health issue mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. mental health. And yeah. currently, they even mentioned that probably it may also affect the physical functionality. So as mm -hmm. just now you mentioned, the excess weight may cause knee pain yep. or difficulties in moving. Right. So that yeah. also should take into consideration. Yeah. Even now, I guess uh, for the uh, obstructive sleep apnea, mm -hmm. it was also one of the issues for those who have a high BMI per se. Yeah. So you know, and um, then the, the lack correct. of sleep can also lead to other things as well, you know, and that mm. would also play a part in weight management too. So one of correct. the main correct. things that I see in the clinical setting mm -hmm. uh, is that people come in with that, ex I wouldn't just say increase, right, but that excess mm -hmm. amount of weight uh, yeah, they find yeah. it very difficult to just do normal things, you know, and it's, it's, it, you want to help all these people as much as possible because uh, that, that weight reduction will definitely help them. I yes, think. yes, yes. So, um, so where this, where you mentioned weight is um, the kilo itself or the number itself is actually 
uh, may not be the key factors. So instead, you really have to look into the holistic health uh, as a whole, that how the weight is going to affect uh, you and I uh, in uh, uh, the, the whole uh, physical and physiological function itself. Yeah. Good. Yes. So, and, um, and there's also mentioned that with that increased weight, we also have thought about, uh, uh, yes, uh, excess weight, it does actually affect our health. And generally, uh, I guess, uh, overseas, they also look into um, excess weight. They're going to affect three uh, things. So one is the metabolic health. Second mm. is the uh, mental health. And of course, thirdly, as mentioned, it's actually the physical uh, functionality. Yeah. All right. So for Shamit, yeah. Uh, uh, would you mind to elaborate further how uh, among your, uh, your patient or client that you have uh, attended, how does the weight actually affect them? Um, I guess um, for the clients that I see would be mainly people uh, that come with certain symptoms already, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, they would uh, probably come with high elevated blood sugar levels. They mm -hmm. can also come with, as you mentioned earlier, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Um, yeah, yeah. We also see children who are actually already overweight and obese. We also see very young patients as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I say the first thing that they, they are very concerned about is how, how can they manage the situation? You know, they, yeah. they come in a little bit confused sometimes, I would say, because mm -hmm. they would have heard a lot of things from yeah, yeah. almost everywhere, either mm -hmm. through WhatsApp or Google or their friends and, and family telling them so many things. So they yeah, do yeah. come in a little bit, a little bit confused. Some of them are very, uh, are pretty much uh, determined to follow other advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they just want some clarification. So I would mm -hmm. say, yes, they, they do come in with a lot of questions. That's one thing. Uh, they mm -hmm. also come in very worried, you know, mm -hmm. as uh, to what that condition could also mm -hmm. lead to. Yeah, so if we are managing their diabetes with their weight, yeah, managing yeah, their yeah. heart condition with their weight, they are, they are very concerned, you know. And especially if you want them to move more and the mm -hmm. pain sets in, pain, pain in their joint, in their back, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know they, they, they do tell us that um, those, that limitation uh, is definitely of uh, something, something that they are very worried about as well. Correct, correct, correct. I guess also hear from you is... Uh, Probably because uh, we are working in the clinical setting, so often yeah. they don't come with just pure weight issue. They actually come mm. with some complication or comorbidity itself. Yep, yep. Which is where, for example, just now you give a first uh, uh, example is that they come to see a dietitian mainly because uh, they have breast sugar issue. Yeah. So the weight normally is uh, secondary or even not uh, at the top of the list oh, or correct. at the top at the mind the as well. main concern, right, right. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. And for us, we also know that, for example, diabetes is very uh, correlated with the body weight itself. Mm. So we get to know by uh, study, as long as they're able to reduce 5 to 10% of weight, it's going to improve their uh, blood sugar control, glycemic control as a whole. True. Yep. And similarly, it would be as you mentioned, it could be the help them to reduce the burden of their knee, the back, mm. and so on. Mm. So there's so yep. much thing that actually is contributed uh, by the weight, body weight itself. True. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so I mean, uh, also seeing with the with the um with the COVID situation now correct, that goes correct. with a higher higher BMI because BMI is yeah. a risk of other diseases as well, and that in a, in a larger sense. So we're True. also seeing those with higher BMI. They do tend to have um, higher risk of, you know, um, probably it, in, in terms of surviving. If they mm. were to get into the survival, it's it's also quite quite poor as well. So I mean, Correct. that that is one aspect to look at. Um, mm. But I guess um, for those of for those of us who are trying to get control of our weights of our weight and our if we have high blood sugar or other parameters that are affected, I guess it would yeah. be a good time to start now as well. You know? Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Honestly, uh, for the weight, uh, it, now they even go into uh, focus into the mental health because we also mm -hmm. get to know that those that who have weight issue, they tend to have a lower self-esteem and they are quite troubled at some point because of their body image. True. And they even have a, a study tell us is that those who are higher weight tend to be unable to get a job because mm -hmm. of uh, 
uh, social stigma and so on. Yeah. Yep. So I think body weight itself is actually beyond what we call metabolic health or even functional issue. Mm. You're also looking to the mental health as well. Yeah. I mean, looking uh, at social media nowadays, it's such uh, a big influence on people and what we see on it. I yeah. guess we see it every day, right? What we look, True. what we see every day really does influence us. We can put up a guard and say, uh, no, I'm not, it's okay, I'm not like that. I'll never achieve that. But to so many people uh, who are struggling with weight, mm -hmm. it actually does It does affect them. And that's what we, I, I commonly hear from mm -hmm. specific groups of people as well. That, yeah, you know, I'll never get there. I, I'll never be able to achieve that. They're always comparing yeah. themselves to, to others. So it's, uh, what you said is right. You know, it does affect them beyond just their weight itself. Correct, correct. Now, one of the, the, the mental health issues, just now I pointed out, uh, uh, is the social stigma that having, like in social media, they always mention, uh, or they, they may actually hint that people have high BMI tend to be lazy, the high BMI, they tend to be very uh, 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 incompetent in some sense. But actually, they also, on the other side, uh, they are actually people who are struggling with weight, mm -hmm. even though there's no such a hint, they themselves yeah. will feel themselves that is lazy. They may yeah. actually even label themselves as uh, incompetent. This right. is what uh, I also heard the name called uh, internalization of weight bias. So it means that they themselves feel themselves yeah. in such a way. Right. So it could be quite scary. Yeah. And uh, uh, probably just to add on is that I, the day I attended a course and uh, there's one uh, speaker have shared uh, the healthcare professional, how they portray the uh, weight bias. You know, there's a top three healthcare professional uh, uh, is being viewed, they give the most, uh, how to say, the patient feel the most from them about weight bias. Number mm. one is doctor. Number two is nurses. Number three is dietitian. <laughs> no! Uh, Yes, the data has actually come from US. So I was quite surprised. I mean, in terms of number, uh, I don't think uh, a dietitian is that high number. But unfortunately, yeah. in that data, she's telling us is that dietitian is the number three profession whom uh, the patient feel that they're being judged for their weight. So yeah. you can see that actually not just social media, not just themselves, somehow the healthcare itself also uh, uh, uh impose some of yeah. the, yes the yeah. weight bias onto the yeah. patient so i guess being the healthcare professional uh, uh working in the healthcare setting we have to be aware of our right. uh non-verbal judgment or yeah. the words that we use what we say to our patients correct 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 to make them feel safe you know when they come in yeah. to see us you know, correct, they correct. tell us anything and we are there to help you know, that's the most important true, thing yeah. true. And we shouldn't have the mindset that because they are they're having high BMI and hence uh, 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 and hence they are more lazy, unable to commit to the 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 plans the plans and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So then, uh, probably we too uh, we talk too much, but we <laughs> kind of know that yes. Dietitians, it, dietitians. It, yes. <laughs> I get to know the assess weight, it really matters. Okay? Yeah. I guess uh, everyone, if you feel that you do have uh, any weight issue, by all means, uh, just be open and discuss with your healthcare provider. Yeah. And then let's see what we can actually work together and help you to achieve your health goal per se. All right? Now, uh, if they so happen, uh, there is actually a client come to you and before they even talk about weight reduction, actually what, uh, do you want your client to know at first? I guess, um, I, I guess people have to realize that um, there mm. is no one direct method to, one, one direct way to losing weight. Uh, yeah. It actually involves a lifestyle. And we, we use the term lifestyle so loosely sometimes. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you're actually speaking to somebody who has to practice this, it's actually a very big thing for them to hear, you know. And we have to be clear that what lifestyle means is, as, as we have mentioned earlier, it's a mental uh, health. It's also physical health. Um, mm -hmm. It's also managing even, the, you know, mental health is in stress, getting proper sleep, mm -hmm. uh, just just being prepared for those, for these changes. 
Mm. Uh, so they have to understand what it means by lifestyle. They have to get some support probably. Uh, if they have if they have children, they can they can do this with them. If they have uh, spouses, they can help them. Parents mm. who can help them, you know, even friends, I would say, right? I mean, we are we also have we have great support system in friends as well. So if if we if they can have that, that would be also be a good thing for them to uh, hold on to and try and work through those weight changes as well. Yeah. Correct. So uh, sometimes laying the foundations like this is really important, and I guess it's good to start with things with, with this sort of um, discussions with with, uh, with people who are interested in managing their weight. Uh, you know, it, it's very easy for our clients to actually get information on how to lose the weight. That means what are the diet strategies, what are the physical activity approaches that they can take. It's quite easy, but sometimes mm -hmm. they need the foundation of um, take things slowly. Don't overwhelm themselves with so many changes at once, sure. right? Sure. Just do small things and do it, uh, practice it, make a habit out of it, and then start mm -hmm. other things. Don't do everything at once. Don't sign up for a year in the gym. <laughs> Take it one Absolutely. month at a time. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Try other activities. And so I think these are the, the variety of activities uh, and strategies mm -hmm. that I would also want my client to know. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. So it seems like uh, 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 actually each patient, uh, each client come to us or each patient come to us have big issue, they want to reduce weight. They basically overwhelmed with information and even overwhelmed with all the options provided. So I think they should actually uh, uh, work together as a mm -hmm. team, together with mm -hmm. us, and then let us uh, or uh, let's together to break down all these options, uh, break mm -hmm. down all these approaches, and let's mm -hmm. see which one is suitable uh, for, for him and her, per yeah. se. Yeah. And uh, for me, I also feel that at some point, uh, uh, I actually want to discuss how realistic they are or what is the realistic uh, uh, health goal or weight yep, target that yep. they should actually look into because I, I guess yep. a lot of people when they come to uh, us and the addition they have a, a very high uh, a goal they set into themselves for example they actually will tell you that uh, the addition can I actually lose weight 20 kilo in one month time mm. you know that kind of perception mm. I guess this is where the education had to come in before they even talk about weight reduction, I have to tell them that what is a reali realistic goal uh, we should actually set together. So yeah. that, uh, uh, because I always, always uh, share with my client is that weight management is actually is a journey. It's a lifelong mm -hmm. journey. It's, mm -hmm. not, um, it's not like a spring that is going to last for only a few months. It's actually yeah. going to be a whole life. Yep. So weight loss is one component. The weight loss maintenance, it comes later. Yep. So, I think they should be, uh, uh, I have to make sure that they are mentally prepared with all these uh, things so that they get to know that, uh, yes, uh, it's a lifelong, lifelong journey. Yeah. And uh, we are here uh, being a dietitian, work with them, support them throughout the whole journey. And yeah. they definitely is not alone in that sense. Yeah. I mean, the, yep. the, weight, the weight gain didn't happen overnight. You know, it's not like you right, heard right. something yesterday and you gained the weight today. It doesn't work like that. So it would have yes. taken a few months or taken a few mm. years. So you can't expect to see changes in a week or in, correct, you know, correct, drastic correct. changes in a month. You know, you do need to give your body time as well. Yes. Uh, just as much time as it yes. to it's just somehow to, I can't yeah. help. I would have to tell them that, you know, uh, uh, um, overweight or obesity is a chronic condition. So right. chronic it means that it takes some time to I mean. cause this excess weight. And similarly, in order to reduce weight, it's going to take time as well. And you mm -hmm. require to have a certain behavior sustained mm -hmm. for a whole life in order to make sure that it's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and probably when we, uh, the, the client is aimed enough, this is where that uh, comes to the next discussion point. What do you want your client to consider? Or to talk about uh, during the discussion. Um, I would, I guess uh, there will be probably there will be like um, when you want to talk to your client, it will be two to three mm. different topics. Mainly, you would have in yeah. mind as well. Uh, okay. Depends okay. on what the client what 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 the client comes in with. Uh, sometimes mm. they have many questions already, so uh, mm. we would definitely address those questions. But mm. as, but in in our on our own agenda, I would say that. We do need to cover the the topics that are relevant in terms of 
uh, dietary management uh, in, mm-hmm. in for, for weight uh, reduction. You see, so I guess using uh, covering them with them the terms such as what are calories, uh, yeah. what are food groups, what is serving sizes, what is a menu plan. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think those kind of things are very important. Uh, yeah. They need to understand where calories come from and mm-hmm. how does it play a role. All calories have a, have a nutritional role uh, in our body. We cannot mm-hmm. avoid it uh, completely. It has to be incorporated in different amounts in our meals, in our yeah. day, depending mm-hmm. on even if they have high blood sugar, they have high cholesterol levels and they come to us with this, we also need to manage this with them as well. Mm-hmm. So the term calorie does seem a little bit scary it can seem a bit mm-hmm. big as also but mm-hmm. that's i guess that's the, the the first education point that we would want to cover with with the clients yes. yeah uh, yeah yeah um, so this will be the point that uh, the client really have to consider yeah. and uh, i think uh, being a, a, a the patient or actually the client actually always share with, to them is that you have all the right okay because when you come to us we actually respect patient right or the client right to ask any question all right yep. particularly i think uh, they really have to discuss that how is the whole session go about okay yeah. so what is it starting off with uh, how is the follow-up going to be or yeah. during the session uh, is there anything that they need to take note yeah. or uh, uh, who should the family member that should actually bring around with them okay yep. because be aware that family support is crucial so probably yeah. they will uh, 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 being a client then they should also consider whether uh, asking their family member to join will be beneficial in that sense. Yeah. And at some point, I guess uh, the client can also discuss with us about some how to say if they have any financial issue, because somehow uh, 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 their buying power or their financial capability we determine what sort yeah. of recommendation we can actually provide to them. So if they do have financial challenge, okay, then they can actually honestly tell us. So that the food option that we offer they can actually take into consideration of their financial status yep. instead of uh, telling them to eat uh how is it kiwi the kind of uh, high uh, or pricey fruits then probably when they mention that they have financial issue then we can tune down to probably like banana or yeah, more yeah. local tropical fruits would be yeah, lower cost yeah correct correct yeah. and uh, i somehow also feel that uh, um um, if they really happen to face some l- a stressful life issue, all right? So, uh, for example, if some client that they have a uh, family member who falls sick, okay? for example, that uh, family member, the mother-in-law has cancer, then uh, he or she needs to take care of her. So when that situation happens, probably it's too stressful to discuss about weight issue at the first time yeah and uh, instead of looking into weight reduction probably at that point of time weight maintenance would be the first goal that uh, we can actually set with our client True. so i guess my key is to uh, really uh, that the uh, our client or uh, uh, yeah they have to be open-minded to share with us uh, what sort of experience they're having or what sort of question in their mind so that and we understand them well, probably it will help us to fine tune the recommendation that we're going to offer to them. Yeah, actually, I do agree with that too. I mean, during this, mm. even let's, if we're looking at something more more current with us right now with the COVID yeah. um, pandemic, and we probably working from home a lot. And yeah. as you mentioned, you know, uh, we have so much, we, it's a very different lifestyle. And I, and I know so many people who are adjusting to new lifestyles, who yeah. have yeah. to manage yeah. with um, different income altogether usually lower mm. income than what they are used to. So I guess correct, we want correct. to start a weight uh, weight loss strategy now. Probably mm-hmm. it's not the best time yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Why not maintain the weight first, you know? Why not um, just just uh, just keep yourself healthy, uh, monitor yes. your weight in terms of maintenance. So yeah, keep healthy, keep active. But mm-hmm. I guess focusing on weight loss uh, may, may, be, may come in at a later time. You know, correct, so now correct, you just correct. maintain your weight and keep yourself healthy while managing all the other things that are happening around. So true, so true. Yeah. Handling yeah, because, too many things at once is, is, is going to be quite difficult to, for, yes. you know, to, to monitor the weight too. Yeah. Correct, correct. And although we have mentioned that, yes, uh, uh, weight reduction will have a lot of benefits, 
especially yep. if they have high BMI. Yep. And they also uh, have uh, uh, research mentioned that even though uh, 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 they're taking the same amount of calorie, but they actually improve their diet quality itself, it also sh shows some health benefit too. Correct. So not just to reduce weight, somehow uh, just changing the diet pattern, the food quality can yep. also share uh, benefit yep. too. So we really have to uh, need our client to be open to it. Mm. And uh, of course, being the practitioner, dietitian, we must be ready to listen to their concern. Mm. We must be open to listen to their uh, worry at that point of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yes. And of course, when we talk about uh, uh, weight reduction, and surely in out there, we hear a lot about different types of uh, dieting yeah. plan. Yes. Shami, what's your take then? There's so many overwhelming. You name it, so you many. surely has it. Yes. Yeah. And then as long as you Google, oh my God. It's, it's, where it's crazy. All the yeah. um, I think people want to be current and yep. you know they, they want to try new things. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, well, I, I, of course, we're not going to tell you, no, you shouldn't do it. We will yeah, only say yeah, this yeah. to to patients and clients who, uh, if they do certain strategies and it affects them uh, negatively, that means you know their blood sugars may go up, cholesterol levels mm -hmm. will shoot up. You know, if yeah. um, if we see outcomes like that, then probably we will advise them against going for mm -hmm. those types of diets, yeah. uh, especially diets that avoid total food groups that increase food groups to up to seventy percent of total calorie intake. Mm -hmm. uh, we will do this caution you know with, with, with caution for uh, many of the clients but um i sure. guess to me personally i would say it shouldn't be very complicated you know weight maintenance or weight loss uh, at this mm. point in time especially where what we're going to right now it's it shouldn't be complicated it should it should be something that you can do for a long time so mm. I, I would say sustainable it's a big word yeah but uh, it's something that you need to do every day Right, so pick a plan, go for plans or small strategies that you can do every day. So if you find that maybe your snacking uh, choices are are not so good, maybe uh, it's uh, it's high in calories. Uh, they're very sweet, mm -hmm. very sweet beverages, and uh, you tend to snack more than you have your main meals, for instance. Right, so yeah. work on things like that. Right, uh, rather than so it's it's a kind of a total thing rather than looking at one particular type of diet and just following it just because it's what people say people other people have said might work. Right? We're we're not sure of the long term uh, effects of these sorts of diets. Hmm. So uh, uh, to me, for now, probably just at, especially in our current situation, stick to the basics, balance, uh, variety. Right, uh, those are uh, those are the the simple terms that uh, or simple strategies that we can follow for now. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that people know what is wrong in their diet to some extent. Maybe not the details of it, but to some extent, people know that probably they're eating too much processed food, or they're eating too much of the um, oily foods, or a lot of sugary beverages in the day. If you, if you know this about your diet, then make mm -hmm. those changes first, right? Rather than just jumping onto a diet plan that is up there in, in the online world, uh, mm -hmm. do things that are more achievable first, I would say, and see how it goes from there. True, true, yeah. true. I guess, uh, uh, um, as mentioned, we have to take, uh, how to say, uh, to the conservative or the, yeah, the, the conservative plan at first. Mm -hmm. And of course, in terms of weight management globally, we kind of know that or internationally, the international body also recognizes that uh, regardless what approach that you choose, as long as yep. it's able to reduce your overall calorie intake, yep. uh, it's going to work. So yep. regardless, you're going to practice a high protein, low carbo, high fat, low carbo, yep. uh, ketogenic diet, and yep. whatever diet that you can name it, Yep. At the end of the day, all this diet is mainly to restrict your calorie intake. Mm. So, uh, for example, if you look into the high protein, low carbo, okay, so basically restricting the carbohydrate intake a day. Mm. And when you restrict the calorie, you take a high amount of protein, you know that you have a certain limit to take the food. So, mm. and hence, at the end, it's actually cutting down the calorie. 
And of course, they also have uh, 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 outside, they also have uh, more different types of diet. You name it like ketogenic diet. So it's going yeah. to take high fat uh, yeah. into your food. And then again, it's low carbs. And for information, ketogenic diet, I guess we need to share with the public is that ketogenic diet means it's so high fat that until it's low protein and low carb. Yeah. And again, how much oil or fat you're going to able to consume. Yeah. So and hence, indirectly also restricting your food option and hence reduce the calorie intake. So it's not Shami also has shared, if you're able to achieve like for female calorie 1,000 to 1,005, and for male is with Dyson 5 to 1,008 calorie, in this uh, calorie reduced diet, it's going to help to help uh, our client to straight some weight. So again, it's really looking into, uh, I guess, the sustainability of the... So regardless of which diet plan that you're going to follow, as long as you're able to sustain, maintain, and continuously doing it, then the effect you is actually very promising. Yeah. It's just that most of the time we observe is that uh, there has relapse happen. And yeah. once relapse happen, they feel guilty and yeah. hence they will not follow the plan anymore. So right. when they stop doing it, then this is where the weight rebounds happen. Yeah. And uh, I guess we really have to share with our client is that uh, in weight management, the most shocking is that each time they lose a certain amount of weight, uh, actually the energy expenditure will drop. Uh, of course, the drop of uh, uh, energy expenditure, one is the, they are more efficient in using calorie, number one. Number two, their body is trying to adjust to the sense that reducing the, rest, the resting metabolic weight. Mm -hmm. And of course, another issue they're having is that uh, they actually will feel more hungry, all right? Because of the what we call the hunger hormone, yeah. started to increase and the society hormones start to drop after they lose some weight. So actually the body is keep on fighting fighting back each time we drop weight. So we have to be very careful when that point happened. And certainly there also has a systematic review mentioned that the weight gain happened six months after they have reduced their weight. So you can see that, uh, uh, yes, weight redu reduction is actually is a better for us. But actually, our brain, our body is also trying to fight back at some point of time. So, and hence, we mentioned that weight management is actually really a lifelong journey. It's yeah. not a short-term issue that we need to address. On. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think um, it's also important that, mm, that mm. Uh, people who are uh, planning to lose weight also understand this, that mm, once mm. you lose a certain amount of weight, you do need to give yourself some time to get your body some time to get used to that weight that you're at, you sure. know? And then, um, so it's the, the graph doesn't go down all the way. Correct, <laughs> so correct, if correct. It, if it worked that, that easily, then um, it would be very straightforward approach, I would say. Correct, but, correct. Um, it takes time, so you lose some, some amount and then you maintain. So the maintenance part is just as important as the weight reduction part. Uh, correct, it may correct. take up to two to three months for you to maintain, but keep the weight there. You know, maybe you need to switch up your exercise routine just to get the body uh, mm. a bit shocked to a new routine. Then you yeah, may start yeah. to reduce weight again, right? But mm -hmm. don't stop. I, I would say, I would say, keep going. Uh, keep Correct. following the plans. Uh, try Correct. new Correct. exercises. You know that could keep your um, a ver a variety. That could keep the interest going, motivation yes. as well. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Keep, Correct. Keep it interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Jamie, I agree with you because I think uh, our client will need to be informed that mm -hmm. uh, the weight loss journey is not always smooth. It's not mm. always linear or there's not always a straight line. Yep. So there's always up and down, similarly to the weight as well. So you may be uh, quite likely reduce a few more weight, then suddenly the weight become uh, stagnant. Yeah. And then later on, suddenly, uh, even though you may actually uh, uh, comply to a diet, this will happen that the weight increase one to two kilo. Correct. Right? Yep. So like this is the body physiological changes happen. And yeah. the body also looking to trying to fight back, adapt, fight back, adapt, yeah. that kind of scenario. So yeah. uh, the weight, uh, how to say, it will not going to be stable yeah. as long as you're going through the weight loss journey. It's yeah. just that we want to look into as overall, uh, uh, maybe in annual basis or monthly basis, what is the weight pattern like? It yeah. should actually showing a, a reduction, a reducing pattern, all right? So always good to actually track the body weight 
uh, in a monthly basis. Or even yeah. we mentioned that probably uh, to do a self monitoring in a weekly basis. Okay. And of course, we know our client, they can be quite obsessive. They do daily weighing, yeah. which I do not recommend uh, because yeah. somehow it's rather stressful to look at yeah. your weight every day. Yeah. Okay. And I think, especially for female, uh, sometimes we have the free attention issue. Yeah. So then the, week, uh, the, the daily weighing can be quite uh, stressful in that sense. Yeah. In terms of monitoring. I would say maybe if you have to, if you want to get on the on the weighing scale to check your mm. weight, maybe mm -hmm. once in once in two weeks would be would be okay. Uh, you can do it once a week as well, but it yeah. may not show very big differences, right? So that mm -hmm. that takes me back to the earlier points we were talking about as well. So it's not just about the weight coming down on the mm -hmm. scale. There are yeah. other health outcomes that you can look at too. Sleeping quality, sleep quality. You can look True. at your stress levels. You can yes, look at how yes. you feel. I mean, the, the, that, that kind of feel overall. Do you yeah. feel better today after doing a workout yesterday? So those mm. kind of things can also be measurements of the success of your plans rather than just stepping on the scale and letting that mm. tell you how good you are doing. You know, so, so uh, true. it has to change. You know, the monitoring does need to change as you take on different plans, any plan for that matter. Correct, correct, correct. I guess, I mean, you have pressed on the good point. So uh, we shouldn't stress on the number on the scale. You should look into overall health as well when you look into the monitoring parameter. So like, uh, how do you feel, uh, sleep quality, whether the blood sugar has gone down, blood pressure, your lipid profile, cholesterol issue, and so on. So all this also need to take into consideration to determine the success of the weight reduction. Okay. So the weight reduction should improve health Okay, mm -hmm. not we should not look into to improve body image per se. Yeah, per se, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, we also hope that by losing weight, it will also help the client to think more positively, to mm -hmm. perceive themselves more positively in that sense. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. now, since we're also talking about the uh, uh, monitoring, probably people will be started to uh, now, how to say, can't wait for us to share a bit of tips to reduce body weight. Yeah. Okay, so now we come to a discussion point number six. So what are the eating tips, Shamin, that you find it will be quite helpful for your patient or your client to reduce weight? Yeah. So many, right? Uh, yeah, we so eat many. everywhere <laughs> and we eat all the time sometimes. So uh, yeah. if I had to, if I had to narrow down just to, just to, for a few different points, if mm. we are preparing food at home, for instance, I could start there. I guess mm. during this time, many many of us are mainly preparing all our meals at home, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, buying food. Even if our takeaways are allowed right now, it may not be so often as, as it was earlier. So mm. one way, uh, one one way to get control of your diet plans would also be to cook from home because then you're in more control of the ingredients you put in, the portions mm. of food that you put in as well. So I would I would suggest. Uh, home preparation, home food preparations for mm -hmm. people who are, are planning uh, for weight reductions. And mm. I guess some of the things that uh, you will need to be careful with or start with is probably how you prepare your meals. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's the stuff that I guess is already commonly known, yeah? Uh, go for, reduce your oil intake. Uh, why? Because uh, oils from the calories from oils are pretty high. They mm. almost double the amount in um, in carbohydrates and protein. So one mm. way to effectively reduce calorie intake would be to reduce your oil intake, no matter mm. what oil. Yeah, it could be coconut oil or it could be olive oils and uh, canola or palm oils. Whichever types of oil, they all have the same calories. So mm. reduce the consumption of oil. That would mean changing your cooking methods. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's of course it's easier said than done. It will take mm -hmm. some time for us to get used to it, but uh, correct, correct. you will see you know benefits in uh, in, in in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, when when we do that, and then we probably we have to compromise on the taste because we are so used to eating foods with that amount correct. of oil. Oily right. foods are more tasty because you know fat carries flavor, and the flavor mm -hmm. is wonderful in our cooking. So, so I yeah. guess. Then one way, once we've reduced the oil, one way to to elevate our uh, liking likeness towards food would be to make sure it has a lot of color mm. in it. So we yes. eat with our eyes and our nose first. So True. always make sure that your food has more color in them. And one natural way to add 
in it would be more vegetables more fruits in our fruits. our salads our stir fried vegetables even our meat chicken meat based dishes can have vegetables in them you have yes. natural sweeteners you have natural sodium mm. uh, you also have natural flavors in them right so i guess True. when you mix certain ingredients together you would reduce the need to add all these ready made sauces ready made paste bottle mm. you would naturally need to reduce it because you already have the flavors from all these combined ingredients correct, uh, correct that would correct. also lead to another way to reduce your calorie intake because ready made sauces ready mm. made paste uh, bottle sauces are all calories and you True. can get the you know uh, less calorie or reduced calorie option by just uh, going the natural uh, natural way of preparing the correct the correct, correct. And I would say that somehow we look into all these commercial sources. Mm. Uh, they may actually make it overly flavorful that you get somehow can't stop. You just addicted, eat can't stop. Right? Yes, yeah. addicted to it. <laughs> so it's causing a bit tough yeah. when you talk about food control if we are yeah. using the commercial source and so on. So yeah. I guess if now uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, people are starting to I can see that in our social media, people are trying to oh, yeah. cook. I think it's a very good trend though. Yep, yep. Yes, and then they should actually use this time to experiment a lot of the healthy yeah. recipe. Yes. And which I mean, probably I will uh, curious that uh, now is having this uh, work from home things or encouraging cooking. And we also try to minimize going out. And whenever you go to grocery shopping, would you mind to share with us what would be the top five items that you will actually put in your uh, uh, grocery shop? I knew yeah. this question was coming. So I was trying to think, <laughs> actually, before you asked me, I knew you were going somewhere with this. Uh, I would say that I guess you need to, okay, generally I will plan the meals mm. throughout the week, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I guess, gen uh, uh, if just say we are preparing meals for the family, uh, yeah. you have to plan your meals because we need to reduce the number of times we go out as well. So True. Uh, good to have a plan maybe the day before we're going for our grocery shopping mm. and uh, i would say that uh, uh start with uh sorry proteins uh mm. i would say two two proteins if you want uh stick to that uh, your portions will be up to the number of people in the house mm. you could pair up uh, eggs with chicken or you have red meat um with tofu uh, mm. All these are the, those natural foods, I would say, right? So mm. try to stick to having uh, maybe two, two or three proteins in, in your grocery list for the week. Mm. Right? You yeah, can switch yeah. it up, of course. You can cook in bulk and store it and heat it up, mm. depending on your schedule from of our working from home. Uh, sure. Of course, stop by the vegetable stalls, <laughs> and that's where you can have all your uh, uh, natural flavors and colors and variety yeah. of uh, nutrients that you need as well. So. Mm. Uh, I would say maybe uh, a good a good amount of veg vegetables, yeah, from mm -hmm. leafy vegetables to those that can last you a little bit longer in the week as well. So mm -hmm. those leafy ones might be might have to be used up first, and then can use the others later. That's really up to you. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I would say start off with the proteins, maybe three uh, yeah. proteins, and mm -hmm. then some vegetables. I would go for maybe about, maybe about four to five varieties of vegetables, so you can have mm -hmm. a mix as well. Yeah. Uh, that that and then uh and uh, anything else in this. so i i can't really pinpoint i was really trying to get up come up with a list <laughs> or something yes. but uh when you're experimenting with dishes just uh, yeah. keep an open mind have your recipe mm -hmm. and just go for your for your ingredient list i would say don't sure. have to, it's very difficult to say top five <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and probably i mean uh when during this period of time we're also trying to choose food that can last long and yeah. for example, uh, canned food or frozen yeah. food, what is your take about it? Because we actually receive uh, uh, quite a lot of the negative feedback, you know, mm. could be a uh, belief, uh, self-belief and so on. What is your take on it? So can it actually include it in the part of the healthy diet or even for weight reduction? Um, I would say it depends on the type of canned mm. food. Uh, mm. There are types like uh, canned vegetables that are already soaked in maybe salt and sugar, mm. right? So I guess for that, you know, you know, it's 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 useful. Mm. So you can't deny that it's not useful. It is useful and it feeds a lot of meals to a lot of people. It's also uh, it kind of saves money as well for many people who are also struggling to purchase big amounts at at one time. True. So, True. 
uh, if you do need to go for canned foods, go for something that uh, just canned, yeah. maybe just the yeah. salt or sugar where you can rinse off. So once you yeah. empty your cans, you can rinse it off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, the other option would be selecting those in dry form. So if you mm. have to go for um, your beans in cans, you can go mm. for the dried beans, soak them mm. for overnight or a few hours, and you can just boil yeah. them. Mm. Uh, but maybe if you're looking for weight reduction or weight maintenance at this point mm. in time, perhaps uh, things like canned uh, meat, you know, like canned curries and creamy soups may be something you would want to avoid. Mm. You need to I like it. Yes, I like yeah. the idea that you've given. Somehow when you talk about the canned food, uh, um, for convenience sake, somehow I will actually recommend uh, the client that to buy some of the can, the bean, the beans actually in canned form, right. like the kidney beans, yeah, uh, green peas. Actually, right. all these beans is actually, uh, you can, because it's canned, they're really yeah. pre-cooked, so they're kind of soft in texture. So yeah. if you want something quick, for example, they're making salad, Yep. Then they actually simply can just uh, rinse it and then put it into yep. a salad. Or if they are making soup, yep. then uh, a, a soup that actually is going to use a short period of time to cook it, then I think this kind of a, a canned beans will be quite helpful. Yep. Like somehow you can even get a, a canned corns. Actually, yeah. the, the sweet corn, they actually can actually increase fiber to the to the food as well mm. and make the food tasty, uh, taste sweet and taste good. I yep. guess some of the option can be included into their food. So it's really looking into the type instead of getting those that are very salted in very high uh, salt. Yeah. And then probably it's not a good option. And just how you also mentioned protein. I guess now if you can, if you get to know that some of the uh, produce, the, the poultry can be quite expensive, fish is quite expensive. Somehow I would, you may actually find that some of the grocers, uh, supermarket, they may actually give an offer to canned tuna. Yeah. This food, I find it can be quite useful at some point because yeah. canned tuna, you can get the canned tuna soaked in water. Yeah, in, so water. in water. So water. Yeah. So then it can actually help you to cut down a lot of calories and the yeah. protein is lean. Yeah. Uh, good quality protein as well. So I would say that uh, it's really looking into the types of canned food that you can look into and especially yeah. during this period that uh, you're encouraged to stay at home, then um, some of the canned food will be quite, quite handy. And of course, mm -hmm. like Shamin, you have mentioned that frozen food mm -hmm. or even dry items, uh, dry mm -hmm. beans and so on, all this mm -hmm. is actually considered cheap protein. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, sorry, just now uh, uh, someone talking to me. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So then we're talking about the dry items, dry beans and so on. They will be quite come in handy. Yeah. And of course, I guess somehow frozen food, we have to discuss about it because. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people will have a perception that frozen food uh, division value is reduced. But actually, mm -hmm. only speaking, looking into their process, because uh, the times that they harvest to the time that they, they freeze it, basically the whole process, the, fro the freezing process has helped them to lock the nutrient mm -hmm. without uh, or stopping the, uh, the, uh, the nature of the nutrient and so on. So somehow, actually, uh, frozen food, uh, they also, as study mentioned, that the nutrient can be quite uh, comparable for those that is uh, get from fresh locally. Yeah. So uh, it could be one of the options that we look into, I think. Yeah. So what's your take, Jamin? Um, how, how about um, spices? How about spices? Yeah, um, spices are another way, I guess, we could um, add flavors to foods yeah. as well. So mm. that would be a fast, quick way. You mm. dry powdered spices would be much yeah. better than those that are already prepared in the oils and you just have to open the packets and pour. Okay. So go for dry whole spices, um, mm. powdered. Uh, those are in good, in, in the com in right combinations, I guess you could flavor anything. You know, you can correct, correct, correct. Beans. You can even cook vegetables with them. So that's, yes. a, that's a nice way to add flavors to it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, for beginner, I think in terms of spices, you may actually refer some of the cooking website and let's see how they actually uh, come up or blend in into the yeah. food and make it yeah. flavorful. Because uh, uh, to use spices, I guess somehow my opinion, uh, this is just my opinion, it actually takes experience. You yeah. need to be very, have a sensitive taste bud in order to get to know which yeah. spices is working good with what spices or what dishes yeah. and yeah. so on. So I guess during this point of time, 
uh, if you really have the time, by all means, try out the recipe and using the yep. natural spi uh, price, uh, spices. Yeah. You, you may not know. I think somehow you actually get some surprise that uh, if you mix up well, the dishes can be quite delicious. Quite, quite tasty, yeah. yeah. Correct, 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 correct. So, Shamit, any other tips that you still want, uh, you would like to share for, for weight reduction? So, we just um, have a I grocery shopping, cooking grocery at home. Shopping. Say plan, plan, your, plan your meals for the week. Mm -hmm. uh, probably you'll be going out uh, for grocery shopping maybe once or once in 10 days, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, you, have, you do need a good amount of planning for that. And make sure that the main meals are complete. So, you do have mm -hmm. the carbs and vegetables. In that mm -hmm. way, not really reaching out for snacks very often. So mm. when you're planning your grocery list, uh, plan for the main meals first, and mm. then include uh, two or three options for snacks. And try to keep the snacks if it's already ready made, ready packed. For instance, milk, biscuits. Mm. Try not to keep it uh, more than 150. Anything less than 150 calories per serving would be recommended. Mm. So label reading is a must. I would say. You do need sure, to learn sure. to read your labels and that way you can select snacks that are better. Mm. So if yeah. you have um, complete meals, your main mm. meals are pretty, uh, uh, full and complete, you mm. may not feel so hungry by, by the snacking time and you may just want to skip over and go to the next main meal. But if you do feel hungry, please mm. don't starve. Please don't get too hungry. You can have yeah. a snack uh, you know, and uh, go for something that is within the calorie recommendation. Correct, correct. Now talking about snacking at some point, like hungry, hunger per se, because uh, I think it's also good to share that there are two types of hunger. One is physical hunger, one is emotional hunger. <laughs> yeah. So the one that we should eat is when we have physical hunger. So it means yeah. that your body really need food yeah. to sustain your activity yeah. coming soon. So that one is for sure you need to eat. And for the emotional hunger is the it's the timing that you actually your body doesn't need to eat. It just that so happen you see some nice food or you smell yeah. something good. This is where yeah. you feel like eating. Yes. And yes. most of the time, the strategy is that if you are able to curb the hunger just by drinking water, so it means yeah. that after drinking water, you don't feel so much of hung, uh, hunger. So it means that that one is emotional hunger. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So probably somehow we will need to be smart in the yeah. sense of differentiating what sort of hunger that we are having at that point in time. Because yeah. I think uh, when it comes to weight management, you will actually easily get hungry, okay? Yeah. It's a way yeah. that our body tries to fight. So yeah. uh, we need to uh, probably uh, discuss it with your healthcare professional or discuss with your dietitian to talk mm -hmm. about uh, different types of hunger too, because there are different strategies to look into it. Mm. Yes, Great. yes. So, I mean, any other tips that you feel that are beneficial to share? Um, for me, well, uh, mm. in terms of eating, eating out, that, that, that would be my, my main things, you know, focus on the Quite cooking methods, food choices, yeah, 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 and then portion your foods um, yeah. according to your correct serving size. I think these kind of plans uh, are available from the credible mm. nutrition websites. So sure. if you can start, you can start there first and mm. get your information. So you have mm. something to guide you along along the way for now. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. How about now, say their food delivery? Mm -hmm. What is your tips that normally you give to your client? Because now um, food delivery is getting very, very common. Yeah, it's, it's the fastest, quickest way. And yeah, it's, it's convenient. Throughout the day True. nowadays. Right? Uh, True. Uh, I guess for, for, for those who are in the fasting month, maybe eating now throughout the day may not be, uh, may, 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 it's, it's easier for them to control. But mm. ordering food, uh, when you're ordering food, I guess it will be the same principles, you know, it will be the same things where you can mm. allow yourselves to indulge. If you're mm. on a weight reduction plan, you can allow yourself to indulge in maybe one to two meals of your yeah. favorite food in a week. Do not mm -hmm. deprive yourself completely of not taking your favorite things yeah. uh, or your, your, your craving for the week. You know, it's okay to have it as long mm -hmm. as maybe um, 80%, 90% of the time you are still following uh, mm -hmm. your plan and, the, and your healthy eating tips. So yeah, yeah. looking at your menu on, uh, on your phones or online, just mm -hmm. same similar concept where I try to go for foods that are prepared, less oil, uh, 
that are that, that use less processed food uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, oil and, and, and sugar um, so and the food is maybe a bit more balanced so you mm -hmm. have to make sure that your food does have a good amount of um, vegetables proteins and mm -hmm. carbs as well so if it's mm -hmm. lacking one of it you do need to top up so that you don't feel too hungry and you will be reaching for unnecessary things right sure. so you need to be aware that we do find that online ordering from online we don't we don't know the portion sometimes mm -hmm. we don't know what will come to us so if, you, are, if you already know then prepare mm -hmm. something to back up you know in terms of if it's vegetables that are less prepare a salad yeah. at home perhaps or order a salad on the side you know, something sure. like that. it's so yeah. important to to plan ahead what you're going to eat in the next yeah. meal and so on because by knowing the the food the cooking method and so on it helps us to uh, prepare ahead what is yeah. going to be uh, the calorie basically is to help us to control the diet yeah. quality if you get to yeah. know that uh, the coming one meal that's lacking of uh, fruits and vegetables or fiber per se then this is where that you can actually top it up accordingly so it make you more prepared for all this contingency plan yeah, yeah. then of course now today i guess some of the website or some of the health food restaurant they started to put up their calorie and nutrient into their website i think mm. it's pretty good to offer to to check out those websites as well at yeah. least they show you what are the good options yeah. for 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 people that who want to reduce weight so as you mentioned try to choose food that's actually lower in calorie yeah less fat yeah uh, use less salt and sugar so that you will yeah. not overeat per se lah. and of mm. course somehow that if you're taking in the uh, uh fat items that you're aware that it could actually load it with calories somehow sharing food will be quite good instead mm -hmm. of uh, one person to finish the whole uh, uh the whole mm. yes the whole meal itself True. right yeah. now uh let's move on that just now we'll talk about about food 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 is that really a non-dieting approach normally when you uh, uh share with your client going to be beneficial for weight reduction i mean I think uh, we have kind of gone gone through some of the points earlier, especially in terms of uh, mental health, sleeping yeah. uh, patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are stressed out and you, you do have a stressful lifestyle, even now during this time mm -hmm. when you're working from home a lot, then mm -hmm. uh, you know weigh, weigh your pros and cons, and you don't want a plan to fail. You don't want your, your weight reduction plan mm -hmm. to, to not work. You know, so if yeah. you know that you are stressed and you need to focus on work uh, family mm. you probably have kids at home as well so if you have these in mind for now then focus mm. on maintenance right sure. uh, and uh, be just be just, just start getting active because uh, being mm -hmm. physically active can already help you cope with uh, any any stressful issues that you're facing uh, yes. that's help with sleep as well so if if you can't start too much on the diet at least um, mm. start, uh, something else something small that uh, will lead to benefits uh, on a daily basis that, that would yeah yep. i think for for my side i feel that the non-dieting approach for example using smaller plate mm -hmm. uh, when you're going to have a family meal or uh yeah that will be quite helpful because psychologically if you have a bigger plate you will actually uh, have a tendency of fill it up so yeah. that you feel satisfaction uh, satisfaction mm -hmm. say True. So it's always good to start with a smaller plate, okay? And uh, I guess somehow in terms of uh, 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 sipping well would be quite another approach too because now today we get to know, we start to relate body weight and also our sleep pattern. If you're not getting enough sleep, there's tendency that uh, harder to lose weight as well. Yeah. Yep. So uh, uh, any other, uh, the non-dieting approach, for example, doing self-monitoring, it could be mm -hmm. one way uh quite helpful like just now shamir mentioned it could be weekly or bi-weekly weight mm. weighing yeah. that would be quite nice and then also looking into other health parameters uh but sugars or uh, cholesterol profile they mm. will be add on to help yeah. you to get the motivation to continue to lose weight i think another thing is about stimulus control lah. like just now we have discussed about the snacking okay whether a certain time period or certain occasion that actually cause you to snack. For example, uh, watching TV, and yeah. you then unconsciously taking in a popcorn or cookies and so on, yeah. then yeah. it means it's a stimulus. So yeah. probably we have to work around with the stimulus. So yeah. either, for example, you may change the types of snack you are taking. Yeah. Uh, probably instead of taking the high calorie chips and so on, 
you may now start to look into to snack on uh, cherry tomato, for yeah. example, or right. even like a cal celery stick yeah. to change yeah. it from a high calorie to a lower calorie is also a good way to look at. So this is what we call stimulus control. Or even you are so stressed, you have emotional eating. Probably you have to, you have to have a very good self-conscious, all right? So if you are stressful, probably eating may not be the only solution that to cope with the stress. So you may actually work on others. For example, some people, they prefer to write, journal yeah. to distress. Yeah. So this is also one way to do the stimulus control. Yeah. Right? Now, I guess we have uh, uh, some time commitment. Let's move on to the next point. Yes, we almost come to the end. So discussion point eight. Yes. Shamit, so far based on your experience, uh, if you're looking to the client who are able to successfully reduce weight, Actually, what sort of characters that they have or what sort of uh, factors that in them that making them to make the process or make the journey successful? Mm. I th um, if I had to pick those, I think consistency would be mm -hmm. one of the main things. Whatever mm. that they, they, they choose to do, how small or how big, uh, yeah. clients are very consistent in their plans and mm -hmm. uh, commitment to uh, getting control of their lifestyles, leading to mm -hmm. weight change. Uh, that's one of the main factors. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, and once you get a hang of the consistency, you can adjust, yeah. be very flexible with your plans as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I would say that uh, that's one of the main things that uh, help them succeed in their mm -hmm. weight goals. One more thing, probably we um, they have a good support system. So I yeah. know they have communities, fitness communities, mm. join nutrition communities, they have joined their friends together, family, children, and mm. they have, have some people to support them as well. Mm. Uh, or just joining a, a open group in Facebook or, yep. or Instagram. So many, there are so many nowadays, right? And it's coming up so much, especially in the time that we are right now. So this kind of support also does uh, lead to quite a bit of success in terms of mm. really and definitely um, monitoring. If mm. uh, find that the patients or clients who really monitor what they are doing, not the weight, uh, not the weight that by mm. weekly, but what they do on a daily basis, they track, mm. uh, they reflect, and they see their diet patterns. They also look mm. at their physical activity. So those that really monitor what they do and they they can figure out uh, how to do things a bit differently from the monitoring, I guess mm -hmm. that helps them achieve uh, their weight goals or their weight management quite quickly too. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. For my side, I guess uh, I agree with Shamin, you mentioned consistency because I realized that those who are really able to keep their weight off are those that are very quite disciplined in the sense that uh, every day they are quite, they have a consistency plan. For example, mm -hmm. uh, the food intake, the food portion, they're able to know how much it should take, how yeah. is the plate looks like. So yeah. normally when they share with me is that they definitely would take a lot of fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables into their plate. Yep. And then the green is always under control. Okay? Yeah. Regardless, it's always yeah. under control. They will get to know that uh, the limit will never uh, above quarter of the plate, for example. Yeah. Right? And then they fill the plate with a lot of different colorful fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And they started to go a bit more plant-based, I realized. They do take protein. It's just yeah. that they will take more fruits and vegetables per se. Yeah consistency and then they will also have quite a fixed meal timing because they have uh, get used to a pattern that they have mm. to eat in a certain timing it become a discipline or routine to them yeah and in terms of self-monitoring i do realize that uh, 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 um, some of my client or patient they are uh, having a consistent body weight weighing probably uh, like weekly basis mm. and then there are some kind that they are so uh, enthusiastic where they actually will text me or whatsapp me about their own progression in a way yeah. uh, yeah. weekly basis they, or they even take a photo about their food as well how yeah. good they taste of food and so on yeah. and i think people must have to 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 say that will they actually get bored with it and i would say that they do have moment they will exp they will actually explore new food right yeah. they can be quite experimenting it's just that they get to know at some point like snack they know that the snack is not going to be the one that's going to fulfill their nutrition requirement. 
they actually mm. will just have uh, like a light tasting just yeah. to satisfy the taste bud and that's it they will not overly indulge yeah. so it's like the lifestyle become much more disciplined right yeah. and uh, i don't know why it's the best word to describe it it just discipline i guess is the best to describe their their character for yeah. those who are able to keep their weight off yeah i guess when you start right. to see some positive changes then it kind yes. of automatically becomes a habit so as, yes, as, you reinforce, as we, reinforce. Yeah, reinforce. So that's how the discipline kind of builds. We see it as discipline, yeah. but because they're listening to what we're saying, but actually it's, it's because we feel better and there are other outcomes besides the weight that have yeah. become positive outcomes for them. Mm -hmm. Keep at it, you know. It's yeah. nice to see that, yeah. Correct, correct. I agree the reinforcement is crucial and it's always important to identify what is the reinforcing component in you because everyone has different uh, pinpoint or we call that different uh, uh, reinforcement that having in, in you. So it's always good to discuss with the healthcare provider for your healthcare provider or discuss yeah. with your dietitian what are the point that is going to encourage you to continue to do a certain good behavior. Mm -hmm. That will be crucial. And mm -hmm. each time we just need to use the same parameter to keep you motivated. Yeah. 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 And uh, I guess uh, the next will be looking into some of the question. Let's see yeah. what's the question that from the floor, I guess. Um, let's go into the pitch. Let into some of the question. Yes, we have quite a good response for now. Yes, there's one question. I guess we may have uh, uh, um, explained a bit. The question is that keto diet and way of life. Your opinion, please. Yes, Shamit, ketogenic diet, I think, is really uh, to be from Mary Joseph. Thanks for the question, Mary. Thank you for your question. Um, mm -hmm. So I, we mentioned earlier the ketogenic diet is generally a really high fat diet. Um, there are That means that when in total calories in the day, the portion of uh, fat contributing to the calories are really high. So that yeah. we can go above 60 percent i've even seen numbers go up to 90 percent mm -hmm. in the clinical setting which is where i generally come from ketogenic diets are usually uh, prescribed to children who have epilepsy known as seizures so that's yeah. where the ketogenic diet actually came about and mm. it's, it does work for them because you know the ketones can cross the blood brain barrier and it helps in the seizure management mm -hmm. I, um, in terms of weight management, it has shown that you can either maintain the total calories that you take, but change the mm -hmm. composition of the diet in terms of the fats, carbohydrates, and protein, or you can reduce the calorie that you take and then also keep a very high amount of fat. Right, so it can go either way. Uh, overall, you do you do need to you do need to source for the correct type of fat in the ketogenic mm -hmm. diet. Um, yeah. because we need to understand that different types of fat have different uh, pros and cons in our body and they work differently, right? Mm. So you in the difference of saturated fat uh, and uh, unsaturated fats versus trans fats. So there are different types of fatty acids. Cholesterol yeah. is included in this. Uh, mm -hmm. Only with that and with a good plan of um, that amount, that means at least 60 to 65%, you know, you need to achieve that mm -hmm. amount of fat. So only mm -hmm. with that, uh, pair where you have you know what are the fats and the correct percentage then you can actually apply the ketogenic diet correct, in correct. in our in our setting the translation of the diet is actually to the point of even adding oil into coffee for instance that's an example of a high fat meal because you cannot you can't really support it otherwise you need 65 percent from fat means you would need to add fat in almost every meal and snack, right? And it has to be good quality fats. So these yeah. good quality fats are not are not always um, cheap. They are pretty expensive. You need to maintain them and you need to mix them up because you need to get a variety of it. So the strategies would be adding oils to even beverages, adding them into foods and snacks, uh, having a lot of oils in salad mm -hmm. dressing, you know, mainly oil actually rather than having yeah. oil, but mainly oil. Uh, cooking with them, you know, it, it's a different it's a different skill altogether. So what studies have shown that 
in the short term, there is weight loss. Uh, whether it's significant or not, that's a different that's a different thing as compared to normal diets. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sustainability of the diet is still in question. Means you can yeah. still you can start it, but you may probably will not be able to continue it for a long time, because um, you do need to practice it at every meal, every day. So mm -hmm. if you were to go out and eat, you were to meet friends and meet family, it's going to be a challenge for you to enjoy a meal with them. For instance, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess so, the key here is the sustainability of the plan yeah, yeah. because, as we mentioned, weight management is a lifelong journey. Okay, right. it's just yeah. that the, the ketogenic diet, how long are you going to be able to sustain such a diet? Right. And number two is that whether the diet able to support or offer all range of nutrients to you. Yeah. If bear in mind, for example, talk about a uh, ketogenic diet is high fat, so it means is that your carbon can be quite low. If the carbon is low, then where are you going to get all the fiber from? So you may actually get constipated at some point. And there are even a client told me that when they practice the ketogenic diet, because they're taking too much of fat and the body unable to absorb, mm. you know, some, sometimes the, the bad experience come in whereby uh, even though you, you, you will get diarrhea because of malabsorption yeah. happen, yeah. or some to the extent that when they're passing gas. Yep. Okay. Um, well, I hope that it's not something that is going to be ugly to share. Um, <laughs> they will have fat stain in their underwear when they pass <laughs> gas. So I guess somehow we rather have to be uh, be careful in terms of uh, uh, practicing certain diet. There's always a pro and con that we have to take note. All right? yeah. The key is sustainability, lah, I would say. Okay? And uh, probably with this question, uh, uh, it also leads us to another that asks us about um, intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, Fora is mentioning that intermittent fasting help with weight management. Your opinion, Shami? Uh, I again, the, the, it's again back to sustainability. So intermittent fasting, there are so many methods that we can try. Mm. There is yeah. the 12-12 method, there is the 16-8 method, there's the 5-2 method as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, it's the sustainability. Overall, we can see intermittent fasting may lead to lesser amount of calories taken in a day as well because you only eat mm. a certain amount to a certain amount in a day. Yeah. So it, it could just lead to lower calorie, which could lead to the weight loss. True. So, you know, uh, it goes back again to the total calories that, that we take in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and there isn't enough evidence to show in terms of the long-term long-term sustainable, long-term maintenance we, we, um, mm -hmm. is still very unclear. True. Yeah, so I would True. still stick to the um, reduced calorie diet, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Now, uh, intermittent fasting, uh, which is correct, what Shamir uh, uh, had mentioned, I will support that opinion. At the end, is sustainability. How long mm -hmm. can you sustain the plan? Are you able to sustain it for whole life? Okay, in that sense. Once in a while, you feel that, uh, I guess somehow for, for a client that um, they are having weight stagnant and probably practicing or trying some of the new dietary approach should be quite good. This is where that sometimes uh, we may actually recommend our client to practice on certain intermittent fasting just to, you know, let them to experiment whether it's going to the body kind of yeah, yeah. Bring, bring down their weight further. Yeah. Okay? It's just that uh, if it's not going to be sustainable and hence once you have relapsed, weight rebound, they may not be a good idea. Now, all the dietary approach, regardless what types of diet they look into, we get to know that there is certain timing that will have weight rebounds if you are unable to sustain. Okay, So it's always good to discuss with dietitian or your healthcare provider in the sense that uh, uh, what types of diet you are able to confidently tell sustain mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Okay, mm -hmm. Because as long as you're able to sustain, your weight loss maintenance will be quite successful in that yeah. sense. Okay. Just so, to add a good. point, for those mm. intermittent fasting, probably not for for people with um diet diabetes. Mm. Yeah. So if um if, if anybody is uh probably going for intermittent fasting and they have diabetes, uh, cholesterol, heart conditions with medication, yeah, yeah. yeah mm. we probably will advise against it. We discuss yeah, other yeah. methods um in terms of diet for them. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. I guess now be careful. Whoever talk about intermittent fasting, please, please, please do not advise it to whoever you know that they have type 1 diabetes, insulin dependent. It's going to cause issue. Okay? Yeah. 
sometimes even can be a uh, life threatening to them if they're practicing uh, uh, intermittent fasting. So the take is that if you're really curious about certain dietary approach, be open and talk to your health pro- uh, provider or even good it would be talk to the dietitian and see whether it's suitable for you to try it on. All right, the key is sustainability. Number two is the nutrient adequacy. Yeah. Okay. Now, just now, Shami, you talked about the fat and so on. Uh, it leads us into more questions about fat. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we have this question. Is it advisable to buy oil high in saturated fat or unsaturated fat? I get this one, physical cut. Shami. <laughs> Uh, this one, I guess it depends on how you're using the fat as well. Different mm. uh, uh, fat has uh, different properties when you heat it up and in terms of it's, you want to use it for frying or you stir frying yeah. or frying, even mm. baking. Yeah, So different fats have different properties. So if you're going for, I would say, in terms of weight reduction, uh, controlling your diet, you can use any type of fat. Mm. Because uh, right, we, we, we advise against deep frying your foods and coating them with so much of oil and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. so uh any it's it's not just the uh, type of fat but the portion becomes very important in this case correct, so correct. you can pick any type that doesn't uh, it doesn't really change the calorie the calories are all mm. the same actually it's just how you use them yeah? true yeah. true true yeah i guess it's a good point actually all the oils have a similar amount of calorie so it's basically one gram of oil is equivalent to nine calorie okay yeah. it's just that their properties will be different some will be high in saturated uh the mono unsaturated fat some will be high in polyunsaturated fat okay of course in terms of uh, percentage you would say that uh, use different types of oil will be good if you're eating out a lot so it means that locally we're using uh, uh palm oil as a key and they're slightly higher in mono unsaturated fat so at home you may actually want to use oil that high in polyunsaturated fat, which is, for example, sunflower oil. Okay, yeah. if you yourself is actually many hundred percent confident that you are cooking at home, taking home cooked food, then this is where that somehow using oil that is smart balance, whereby you have a good ratio of uh, mono unsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturated fat all together, that will be quite good practice. Okay, but again, to general public for information, all the oil in the market. They do contain mono unsaturated fat, poly unsaturated fat. They also contain saturated fat as well. There's no such oil to say that there's no saturated fat. Like I think. Yeah. Okay. It's just that whether, uh, uh, how is the, uh, how is, how is the ratio going to be in a certain oil? Okay. So experiment, ex, uh, experiment with the food and uh, look into different types of oil. All right, and then the amount is. Of course, important when it comes to weight management, right? Because of the calorie density itself, All right? Another question, yep. I guess we have uh, pretty much covered for now. So, I hope I didn't miss out any question. All right. So, if I do, uh, if we so accidentally, so sorry that we have uh, missed out your question. All right. So you can still continue to post it in our comment box. All right. Then uh, we may actually reply you later. Yeah. Okay, now we almost come to the end of the session, and uh, uh, before we close, Shamit, probably yeah. we will summarize in the sense that one last thing, one what is the key, uh, one key thing that you would want to share or tell whoever want to kickstart a weight loss journey. What is the one last thing or one important thing that you feel is important to tell them? I uh one thing only yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess um, edu- educate yourself first yeah. before mm-hmm. starting anything read discuss uh, with people who know what they're talking about mm-hmm. uh, get opinions uh, about everything that you need to know before you start something so you are well prepared for what is what is going to happen what you can expect mm-hmm. and how to go about things when sometimes things don't go to plan yeah. So you need to educate. I would say if I, had, if I had to pick one thing, it's just to educate yourself. And there's so many ways. There are websites, there are groups. Mm-hmm. Speak to us uh, and uh, speak to your doctors. And of course, you start speaking to your doctors first and then you will go on to others. So yeah, keep keep asking questions. I would say. Yeah. True, true. I agree to the point. Uh, in a weight loss journey, I guess uh, do not do it by, by yourself. Do, yeah. uh, do it alone because uh, you actually require to have a lot of support 
family support, healthcare support, and so on and so forth. Okay? Don't be shy because uh, uh, I, I would say that uh, all the healthcare professionals will be ready to talk to you about the weight management. And of course, talking to a dietitian will be quite beneficial in that sense. Then we can actually work it out to you in terms of your uh, food plan in that sense. Okay, okay. so we have uh, come to the end of the session. Yes, we have, uh, we go beyond the time. Now it's uh, 3.30. I hope that everyone will still get benefited from this session. And uh, I thank uh, Shamin to give us your, your time and also share your experience and also input into this discussion as well. Yeah, right? thanks for having me. All right, also thanks for the uh, IMU Alumni Association to, to plan for this session. And if you feel that every one of you have any uh, specific topic that you feel uh, you want us to discuss about, all right, uh, in terms of nutrition, in terms of uh, 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 medicine and so on, by all means, put your suggestion in our comment box, then yeah. we can actually arrange it accordingly, all right? Now, this alumni sharing is kind of open to all the alumni to share. We also open for all the topics to discuss, okay? Yeah. It can be about medicine, it can be about pharmacy, it can be about chiropractors, so much, okay? So, uh, let's uh, keep it open and then uh, give her your suggestion and we will then arrange another session to share with you uh, uh, our knowledge and expertise okay thanks again for sharing and thanks okay. everyone for listening so i hope you have a, a good day for the remaining of the day okay and again stay safe and protect yourself all right do not go out uh, without a purpose all right so thanks a lot and we will close the session today. Thanks. Bye. Stay safe, everyone.